This week is going to be a big week when it comes to Halo. I'm going to keep you guys up to date with everything going on, so stay tuned throughout the whole video to understand all the details. So let's take you through the week chronologically so we can keep you guys up to date on what to expect for this week in Halo. First of all, we have the ending of the network co-op flying guys. It stopped here August 1st at 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. The sadness has now hit all of us. If you guys had a chance to jump in and play some online co-op, please let me know in the comment section down below because I'd like to see what you guys thoughts are when it comes to co-op. Me, personally, I really enjoyed it. I had a lot of fun. I feel like Halo Infinite's campaign is specifically designed to play co-op in. For how open the world is, for the sandbox items you can play around with. I mean, they, even at the FOMPs, they have four different locations where you can call in weapons because there's supposed to be four players on the map kind of thing. And I was playing with some friends and it was a great time. I can totally get lost in this world. I could definitely see myself jumping back in and doing a whole new playthrough of the campaign. Probably on my Twitch channel, guys, if you want to check it out. Link in the description down below. We do stream every Tuesday and Thursday evening here. I even recently uploaded a clip on my second channel, guys, with me playing some co-op and some weird stuff happened for sure. Going in! <laughs> oh my god! Hell yeah. Uh, oh, 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 okay, we're going. Uh. What? Oh my god, oh my god! <laughs> Oh my next. god, I got absolutely oh, annihilated. <laughs> Players saying, okay, so we can't play the flight anymore, so when can we actually expect to see this in the game? Well, likely this month, guys, as it's still stated on the roadmap here that late August is planned for Network Co-op and Mission Replay to come into the game. And I have heard no information about whether or not it's going to be delayed or not. Obviously, the flight just ended, so we could see some plans change. Obviously, all these kind of plans that 343 puts together when it comes to this flight and stuff, it's all kind of tentative objects of like where they want to release things. But if some Galarian bugs happen, then you probably could expect to see a delay. Though, from my experience playing co-op flighting, I didn't really notice anything that would stop me from playing co-op if it was released in that state. There were some weird things happen when it came to like laggy matches, but that's about it. For the most part, I think it's pretty much ready to go for late August, guys. I definitely would be excited to play that. On Tuesday, we have the conclusion of the Alpha Pack narrative event if that's what you want to call it that's what they call it so i'm going to call it that as well if you guys haven't had the chance to grind out your 10 items when it comes to the alpha pack event pass i uh, definitely want to jump on that you only have to complete five challenges in the last spartan standing to get all 10 of these items guys so it really doesn't take that much time tomorrow is the last day most likely it will be recycled at 11 o'clock i haven't seen any information that there's gonna be another event following up with that but i guess it'll probably be just kind of like an average week in halo when it comes to any kind of events happening within the game of course if you get any information and i'll share with you guys here on the channel yeah you know, i played the alpha pack event and for my most part like it was pretty quick and easy i mean most people completed it within one day uh, i was playing real casually completed in two sessions i know call me a casual right there it's just the biggest downside that they called it a narrative event but there really wasn't much of a narrative at all to talk about for this event so if they're gonna try doing this again next season for season three I would hope they'd be able to plan out something a little bit more engaging when it comes to the story. I thought the first half of the narrative events for the season were pretty well done. Like a nice little like setup of a story, introducing new characters and kind of like give you a context of why you're playing this new stuff in the game. Great job. Second half um, was a complete letdown to be honest. The only other event I've heard about coming in next for Halo Infinite would be the Yappening, which is, hasn't been confirmed, but it's currently leaked out right now, saying it should happen possibly within September 6th to September 20th, though these dates are subject to change from these leaks and in information, but this information and content here has been leaked out for, you know, since the beginning of Season 2, so likely this will come in. We just don't know quite when it will happen, but when it does, I'll let you guys know here on the channel for sure. A big event is happening this weekend for Halo Infinite. That is the HCS North American Super with $125,000 on the line here, guys. We finally had all the pool play candidates all set up, ready to go right here. And guys, this is gonna be a totally different event. We've seen these HCS events previously. We kinda know the teams that are doing well, but there's been huge shakeups when it comes to a lot of these rosters from a lot of these teams right here. Uh, big additions coming when it comes to FaZe Clan, a completely new roster of all full of superstars. And then we also have G1. I've seen been grinding really well with the addition of Boo Boo Doo Boo. Really exciting stuff there. G2 Esports has been seen Grimming with Barcode, who recently flew to the US as well. A huge pick of the best Australian player now on that team. 
So it's not gonna pan out like your typical HCS event. This is gonna be really exciting stuff. I will be watching it for sure. I'm sure many of you are like, well, I don't care about competitive Halo, but you might want to watch it because a lot of times these events come with drops. It's customizable content you can add into your game as well. The most recent Mexico event here had some drops in it. The Valencia event had the diamond coating for the pistol drop right there. So I could expect to see another type of Twitch drop added in to this event as well. So get people to jump in and watch and enjoy some competitive Halo. So it's more from just, you know, wanting to watch competitive Halo. There's some content in there for you to get for free. My assumption is that we could see more of the diamond coating stuff for your Spartan coming in with this event since it's a North American Super. North American viewership is a lot higher usually and a lot of people are going to want a lot to have these types of coatings on their characters. So we could see more of these drops coming in for this event here for this one, Orlando, and probably also for the US Finals as well. The head of HGS, Tasha, did tweet this out saying there are more where that comes from when it comes to these coatings, especially for the diamond coating, when it comes to the Valencia event that we had back earlier in July. So I'm excited to see what we could get for Twitch drops. Again, guys, once we get that true information from 343, I'll let you guys know here on the channel. The one thing I'm expecting to see most likely on Friday or maybe Thursday would be a big info drop of a finally getting a blog from 343 talking about the recent things that are coming with the August drop pod that's been coming out later this month. Unishek recently went hit up to Twitter. We talked about this previously on the channel, but just to kind of reiterate with you guys here, saying that they started to wrap up the door when it comes to the next drop pod here. And it should be be expected in August and we'll be doing a preview blog to highlight the goodness before that earlier in the month most likely probably this Friday or something like that until then we were given the okay to touch on one part of it and that is visors visors coming to cross core customization now a lot of people were thinking like oh this is only going to be the visors well I think it might be a little bit more than that because if you remember from the season one outcomes blog a few months ago that we covered here on the channel as well guys guys if you want to stay up with Halo just subscribe man it's the easiest way to know what's going on the same for right now we're pursuing options that will allow players to use certain customization items on different cores due to the way the core system was initially built Getting items to work on various cores will take time, may not even be possible with all items, and will likely require to do it piece by piece. This is why it's taking so long for CrossCore to finally hit for us guys here. They're saying though, our initial focus is to enable as many helmets, visors, and armor coating across different cores as possible. In short, our goal is that we will be incrementally moving to a model that has coatings and visors working across all cores with helmets and chest gear working across cannon cores as for our first focus changes coming to the system. So I think that the visors are not gonna be the only part. We could see chest pieces, we could be seeing helmets as well as the visors coming in for cross core customization, which is gonna be fantastic for Halo Infinite. I mean, personally, I kind of like the core system because I like the effect of being able to see a Spartan within the game go like, oh, that's a Euro Wars Spartan. That's a Mark V. That's a Mark VII. That is the Eagle Strike core kind of thing. When you get rid of the cross core, it kind of just, everyone just kind of blends together. I think the biggest issue with the core system is that there just isn't enough to make people feel unique enough without having to go into the store to buy something. Once that blog finally does go live, guys, I will do a complete detailed breakdown of everything you need to know from it. Also to be expected to talk about within this blog update, guys, is the issue of extra data being utilized within Halo Infinite. If you guys don't know, in the US here, we have a lot of services provide data caps where if you hit a certain limit, you either have to pay a lot more or your speed gets incredibly slowed down. It's kind of the main reason why I don't want really to play a whole lot of Flight Simulator, honestly. And saying that the team is currently investigating reports of Halo Infinite downloading the extra data after multiplayer matches. An improvement for this issue will be included in August Drop Pod update. Stay tuned to at Halo or to this channel here for a preview blog detailing all things when it comes to this update. So very important stuff to know. Though we could see a big update happening this week as well when it comes to the functionality of the servers for Halo Infinite as well. Uh, with this NA super event that we talked about earlier in the video coming this weekend, there's been some server issues and could involve and affect the competitive integrity of those matches. And right now, Halo Sports Twitter just said that Halo Infinite team is investigating reports of packet loss and fluctuating ping in matchmaking. You can help our team investigate by enabling the network statistics on the UI tab and take videos to share on the make a ticket about the whole thing. I was experiencing this the other night as well, grinding out for my Onyx guys because I really want to get back in the Onyx 
And there was a couple of matches right there where I was getting packet loss. I wasn't dropping any frames on stream, so it wasn't anything with my connection. But we're getting packet loss. The pings were fluctuating from like 60 up to 120. Like some weird stuff was going on right there. It's rare, but it does happen. And if it does happen with these NA supers, it would completely mess up the competitive integrity of a match. So we could see a server update happening this week and have a little bit better functionality when it comes to playing Halo Online. If you want to know more about the packet loss ping issue, I suggest checking out this video right here that we posted up earlier on the channel. And if you want to know more about Forge and possible microtransactions, check out this video down here. So thank you so much for watching. Greatly appreciate it. Catch you on the next one. Peace out.